Okay, let's talk vertical motion word problems. So we'll be focusing on um, solving quadratics and polynomial equations using our zero product property where we have to factor to find the solutions. And remember that when we're factoring to find solutions, we usually have more than one solution. So when we're looking at a word problem, we want to evaluate each of those solutions to decide which solutions actually make sense within our story. So a vertical motion formula is h equals negative 16t squared plus vt plus s. So what does each of those mean? h is equal to the, eight, uh, the height in feet, t is equal to the time in seconds, v is equal to the initial, initial velo upward velocity in feet per second. So notice my units need to be the same here. So my units of my velocity need to be the same as my height and my time. And S is the initial height in feet. So S is what is the object starting at? What's the height of the object at the start? So if we think about someone kicking a soccer ball, we're going to think about our zero feet being that the level where things are starting. So what we're talking about for zero feet here is our ground. So our soccer ball is starting on the ground, and then it would finish up on the ground. It could have someone catch it in the middle. If someone was kicking it to someone who would catch it, in which case the height we're asking about um, would not be zero. So we think about the zero feet as kind of um, where we're starting as our as our starting point. And in some of our form, in some of our situations, that can be um, the level of the water. If we're thinking about someone diving off of a diving board, they're going to do this. I, I'm sorry, my cat has decided she wants to help with this, so I'm going to put her down. Excuse me. All right. So let's take a look at one of these problems, and we're going to try uh, quite a few of these in class that have different variations to them. So now the cat is rubbing herself against the stand. I apologize if we tip over in the middle of this. Um, so we're going to take a look at a few of these in class where things kind of end up differently. This is kind of your basic problem for this. So we've got a toy rocket is launched vertically upward from the ground level with an initial velocity of 128 feet per second. How long will it take for the rocket to return to the ground? So the information that I'm pulling from this word problem is the height that we're asking about, the height we want to know about, so the height and the time that are related to each other. We want to know when this is going to be at a height of zero. So when, is, when does it come back to that ground level? So I actually like to draw a picture for each of these. So if I've got my little toy rocket here, it's go, I've got it on the ground, it's going to go up and it's going to come back down again. So here is my zero feet, my ground level. Okay, so my, my rocket is starting on the ground. I'm wondering when it's going to come back to the ground. So my starting, my starting um, height is where it starts. This height is the height that I'm asking about. So how long the time is it going to take to get to that height? So if I think about my variables related to each other, those are the two that are related to each other. Um, this is just my starting amount here. So I've got a height of zero feet. That's what I want to know about. It's starting at zero feet because it's also on the ground when it starts. And my velocity is 128 feet per second is the height, is the velocity there. Um, my cat is back. Um, all right, so I take my formula. You will not be required to memorize this formula. It will be right on any test or quiz that we work on. So I've got h equals negative 16t plus vt plus h. So the height we're asking about is zero. When is it going to get back to zero? Um, my velocity is 128, and the starting height, this, this, velo this rocket started at zero feet for a height. So I'm going to use my zero product property. I know there's possibly more than one solution because I have an exponent on my variable. So I make sure it's set equal to zero. I'm going to take my right side of my equation here. The plus zero at the end can kind of go away. I'm going to factor this. So I get negative 16t times t minus 8 in parentheses. I break that up into my two equations. So I get two solutions here. So in your word problem, you want to evaluate each of those solutions to figure out which one answers your question. It might be more than one answer. Um, in this case, the time of zero is telling us about where this rocket starts. So this rocket starts at a height of zero at a time of zero seconds. So this means something. It just doesn't help me answer the question. We want to know how long is it going to take for the rocket to return to the ground. So the zero in this case doesn't really apply to the answer of the question. We want to look at the answers as how do they relate to the story. It is going to take me eight seconds to get back to the ground. So this is the answer to my question of how long does it take this rocket to come back to the ground. It takes eight seconds. 
So we're uh, looking at the problem, figuring out what the different heights are within this story. Um, I like to draw a quick picture. Sometimes that helps me figure out where the zero is and what the heights are, what the starting height is and what the height that we're asking about is. Um, and then taking a look at your final answers, whether that's two or three or four answers, and figuring out which one of them or more than one of them is actually answering the question um, that is in the original problem. All right? All right. My cat apparently just wants to be in this video. This is Harvey. All right, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow.